Well, we're very fortunate to be able to welcome Mr. Donato Colucci from the Institute of Migration to Interpol World Television. Donato, what's brought the IOM to Interpol World this year? Good morning. Uh, we are here in order to provide a different point of view of the border management from a global perspective. Now, border management is a, a key issue. We're seeing an awful lot of refugee crises around the globe. Can you comment on how we properly control um, these people coming through our borders? First of all, allow me to tell you that we are in a world on the move. Uh, one out of seven of us is a migrant. So in, uh, uh, in a seven billion world, one billion of people is on the move. Uh, from this, uh, a big share of this is uh, irregular migration, but a big share also is an irregular migration uh, flows. Basically, countries are uh, facing more and more the challenges of uh, uh, controlling these flows that enter and leave countries uh, regularly and irregularly. Um, we are, these people are pushed by many factors. We have uh, demography imbalances or socio-economical differences uh, or also human traffickers and smugglers that are uh, facilitating the irregular migration flows. And all these these are the challenges that countries have to deal with. Uh, but we also have disasters, human-made disasters and natural disasters that are pushing people, are forcing people to move. Uh, for example, uh, we, we can see about the crisis in the Middle East and the North Africa that is uh, um, turning into uh, or is contributing to all these flows moving from the African coast to the European coast. Now we're seeing two things with this. One, organised crime getting involved in moving people across borders. And the second thing that's, that is a real challenge is identity management because a lot of people don't have um, true identity papers. How are you meeting these challenges? This is a very interesting point. Basically, uh, we uh, are uh, we have to expand our uh, our uh, lens, our view. We are not always in the border uh, border post or airports or uh, ports where people is traveling with the documents that may be genuine or not. We are now faced with people crossing the the, the borders in the blue borders and the green borders, which actually is an open space between uh, between the two countries. And uh, most of the times, almost always, these people are forced to move without documents. So the problem now that countries have to uh, face or law enforcement agencies have to face is that who are these people? Who is entering in the country? In that case, uh, identity management comes in and technology may definitely help and, uh, and support the law enforcement agency in facilitating, in speeding up these procedures, uh, but definitely is not yet enough. Technology is a, a big help, but not the solution. But then we find that um, in particular in Europe, you know, if a migrant gets into one part of the Schengen zone, they're free to move around. Do you think there are sufficient controls uh, within Europe and countries for um, these irregular migrants that are coming in? We have to distinguish between the regular migrants and the asylum seekers. For the asylum seekers, there, there are specific procedures. They have to apply for asylum in Italy and they have to wait until when the procedures is complete, completed. Other migrants are definitely identified by the uh, Italian uh, law enforcement agencies or the Spanish or the Greece according to the, uh, the point of arrival. And then the identification procedures starts in order to identify case by say, case of what to do with, uh, with uh, uh, the administrative uh, position of these people. Uh, the cooperation about the, the European countries uh, may definitely improve. Uh, there, is, uh, there are discussions going on in these hours among, among the chiefs of uh, the, the governments of these uh, countries in order to uh, establish an European governance of migration. Now, we're seeing a lot of reports of uh, the terrorist organizations and in particular um, so-called Islamic State and Al-Qaeda um, infiltrating some of their operatives through the migration routes. Are you seeing that sort of evidence as well? It is indeed uh, a reality that uh, these uh, terrorist organizations are based in these key areas where irregular migration flows pass in Syria, in, uh, in Iraq, uh, in Libya and not only. Uh, but definitely the cases of the number of cases of uh, terrorists stopped after uh, uh, arriving the European coast through the irregular flows are uh, uh, very close to zero, if not even zero. Only a uh, 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 few cases, really. Uh, we have to also to shift our point of view. If uh, there is a threat or a t possible terrorist that wants to uh, go to Europe, uh, do we really think that this person will put his life under risk on a boat? So uh, definitely the, the way of entering in the countries may be different. Mm. 
But uh, I know on, on that particular point, we uh, some of the attackers that um, carried out uh, their atrocities in Belgium um, uh, were had come up through the migration routes. The the Greeks had, had proved that, and were using false documentation uh, as they were going through. Uh, how much false documentation are you seeing with these irregular migrants? In ca uh, the case of false documentation, brings me uh, back to to the identity management uh, challenge that countries have to face. When we talk about identity management, we have to think about at least four steps: when the identity is created, when the identity is used by the person that would like to for example, request a driving license or a passport in this case, uh, when the identity is checked by the law enforcement agency and when the identity stops. Uh, um, the uh, uh, efforts of all countries are concentrated on checking identities. Countries have to increase their uh, capacities to uh, uh, cover the entire spectrum of the identity management, starting from the most important part, which is uh, the identity, uh, the, the, the initial phase of an identity, with uh, birth certificates or breeder documents. Uh, there are very few, if not even known, security features on these documents. There is no transparency in issuing these documents, and these documents give uh, the possibility to international organized crime, transnational organized crime, to uh, provide false documentation. So it's not the problem is not who used these documents, but who produced these documents. And how important is Interpol in trying to um, uh, deal with the mi migration crisis and the, uh, the difficulties that you're um, experiencing? A pivotal role. Basically, Interpol is the link between the different uh, police forces, uh, uh, facilitate uh, exchange of information, exchange of analysis, uh, bring uh, law, enforcement, uh, law enforcement together to work in joint operations, and the international cooperation is a key factor. International migration per se is a, a, a transnational uh, issue. Uh, we don't have international migration if we do not have a border. And we don't have a border if we don't have two countries at least. If the two countries do not speak each other, this, no one uh, solution will be effective. The migration crisis is huge at the moment. Over the next few years, is it going to get better or is it going to get worse? We all hope that it will be it will be better, but of course, uh, without a political response uh, to this uh, structural phenomenon, uh, it will be it will be absolutely necessary. Countries are uh, started talking together. There is an important step that countries taken last September 2016 in New York, and the countries UN countries decided to develop together uh, a global uh, compact on migration uh, in order to establish a migration governance. The two very important milestones will be. Uh, will be recorded by the end of uh, 2017 and beginning of 2018. So we're starting to see international community coming together to deal with the crisis? Is the only solution. Donato, thank you very much indeed for spending some time talking to us on the Interpol World Television. Thank you for having me here.